Hello everyone, welcome to the Evil Empire. I'm your host, Evil Empire, and this week in the historic feature, it's Neostorm, a combo deck that uses Neoform and the new card from Zendikar Rising, Seagate Stormcaller, to draw every three drop in the deck, put it into play, give it haste, and attack twice with Combat Celebrant using the Exert ability. So this deck was something that when I first looked at it, um, I had to take quite a long, hard stare at the deck to try to figure out exactly um, how the combo worked. Um, but it really comes down to two cards that are the most key in the deck. Uh, those being Neoform, which says, as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one plus the sacrifice creatures converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it and then shuffle your library. Um, so if you're familiar with this card in the modern format, uh, there's a deck that uses this to uh, basically cheat out uh, Grizzlebrand and draw its entire deck uh, using Allosaurus Rider and Neoform. So uh, this, this card can get up to some no good, even in some eternal format like modern. Um, so together we're pairing this with Seagate Stormcaller. And so the cool thing about Seagate Stormcaller is when it comes in, we're going to be able to copy the Neoform. And then if we can copy the copy of the Neoform using our Dual Caster Mage, then we're going to just be able to continue to draw as many, um, as many Dual Caster Mages as we want using Mirror Image and Glass Pool Mimic. So these two cards are just going to keep copying Dual Caster Mage, which is going to keep copying the Neoform. And eventually we're going to put about 18 to 21 power into play. Uh, depending on how many of the clones we've drawn or how, new, how many of the dual caster mages we've drawn during the game. Uh, which it leads me to the next part of the deck, uh, which is we have a few ways here to be able to put the cards that are either clones or dual caster mages uh, that we've drawn. We want to be able to put those back into our deck so we can um, actually pull them out with the copies of Neoform that we're going to make. So we have Fire Prophecy. Uh, which is going to also act as some a uh, little bit of removal uh, for creatures for us, uh, and it also it mainly I think actually strangely it's the it's the second part of this spell that's really important. Uh, the main thing that we want in this deck is the ability to um, put one of our clones or dual caster mages on the bottom of our library, uh, and then that way we can go and grab it with Neoform later. We also have a one of Valakut Awakening. Um, as is the story with a lot of the cards in this deck, I just don't have the, the, the cards yet because um, Zendikar is not coming to Quick Draft until October 2nd. Uh, and Quick Draft is usually how I go ahead and collect most of the set uh, because it's half the price of a normal draft, but you get the exact same amount of cards. Uh, um, so it's a pretty good deal from my perspective. But they're not doing the Quick Draft uh, as the set opens anymore. It's no longer available at that um, opening time period, so unfortunately have to spend uh, a little bit of time waiting for that to come. But anyway, so that's why I only have three glass pool mimics, and um, to some extent that's why I have only three dual caster mages. Although that's more just something you have to craft from jump start anyway. But trying to save a little bit on the rare wild cards by using um, mirror image, which is essentially the exact same card as glass pool mimic, except. You know, it doesn't become a rogue in addition to its other types, which is not in any way relevant at all. Nobody cares about that. Um, but it doesn't have the land on the back of it, which is kind of the main drawback with Mirror Image. But that's just a little bit of a concession to budget. So if you want to cut the two Mirror Image, add the fourth Glass Pool, add the fourth Dual Caster, that makes total sense. But from a pure design perspective, the deck functions almost exactly the same this way. Um, so it wasn't really something I, I wanted to spend the extra few wild cards on, but... Um, you certainly could if you wanted to, and I think Valkut Awakening has shown me uh, what a fantastic addition it is to this deck. Just the ability to like put all of your junk cards, your dual casters, your clones, back onto the bottom of the deck, and then draw fresh three or four cards. Um, you really turn trash into treasure pretty quickly. You find the other piece of your combo that you'll need to start going off, and then all of a sudden all your clones are back in your deck, and, and you're happy and you're ready to go and beat the opponent down. So this is a deck that um, looks to combo off as early as turn three uh, using Gilded Goose as an accelerant um, so we can get all, uh, all the four mana that we'll need to cast Stormcaller and the Neoform uh, that way. But most of the time it's going to be later in the game that we'll combo off and 
Uh, the deck is certainly susceptible to interaction if you can um, somehow uh, with the trigger for uh, Seagate Stormcaller on the stack if you can kill the Stormcaller and I don't have another 2 drop that's one way to physical combo uh, because I won't have a, a 2 drop to sacrifice to the Neoform which is something that I need to be able to pay the cost although you don't have to pay subsequent costs uh, for the sacrifice at least because you're no longer like the way that it works as it goes on the stack from what I understand and I'm certainly not a judge at all but the little of the rules that I understand it's that um, you're not paying the additional cost when you copy the spell because you're not casting the spell. You're just copying it, putting it directly onto the stack. So you don't actually have to sacrifice a creature every time, um, but you do need that first one. And if you can kill the creature, um, then it's it's going to fizzle. And then um, sometimes I'll have an Augur of Bolas out, which I can use to sacrifice that instead of the Seagate. So that may make it a little difficult. You might actually have to have two re removal spells up as the opponent, but um, certainly just you know keeping the board clean of two drops would be a good way to fight the deck. And then another way to um, fight it is to interact directly with the Neoform. So I was playing against Four Color Omnath with this deck a few days ago, and they used Ether Gust on the Neoform, and so I only had one copy. The, the really crucial thing is um, you need to have two Neoforms. Right, you need to have the one that's going to go grab the dual caster, and then there needs to be one left on the stack for the dual caster to copy. So if you don't have that second one, that makes it difficult to combo, makes it an, an, an absolute impossibility, actually. So to try to get around that, the deck is going to run a Kefnet, which if we draw our Neoform as the first spell that we draw that turn, uh, we get to copy it, and then we'll use the second one to be able to go and do the rest of our combo. Uh, we also have added two Expansion Explosion to the deck, uh, where we're going to use Expansion uh, as the primary spell in our deck, and we're trying to um, copy the Neoform with the Expansion, and then that way when we go get the Dual Caster Mage, there'll still be the copy on the stack for us to make a copy of and continue comboing off. So, the mana base, just to say a very few brief words here. Again, this is kind of a budget mana base, at least... To some extent because I don't have the new pathway lands to be able to put in here. Although I've not seen people running a whole ton of them, I would probably at least add two more, like one River Glide and maybe two more Crag Crown and go down to like one Ketria Triome. But I already had the Triomes and the Stocklands, so uh, that's why I'm running mostly those. But you could certainly customize the mana base however you want. And then the three forest here is really concession to just trying to play the turn one Gilded Goose. Uh, and that forest comes in really handy that way. Although Crag Crown could certainly do the same job. Because it also comes in as an untapped green source. So that is Neostorm Combo. Uh, the new, new version of Splinter Twin that is in a historic format now. So let's take it to the rank queue and see how we do. Alright, so it looks like our opponent's on a Lurus deck. This is probably Rakdos Lurus. Um, you don't really see very much of the blue-white auras Lurus on the ladder, although it is something you can see pretty frequently in the unranked queue. So Thoughtseize is certainly going to be a concern in this matchup. Um, it's the card that can really wreck our combo. Uh, I don't know if this is a keep. It doesn't have any piece of the combo. And it has two cards that we really don't want to draw in Dual Caster and Mirror. So let's just mulligan this away and see if we can get something better. Yeah, okay, this has half of the combo and we can look for the other half with Augur. So we'll put back a land, like a Triumph maybe. Although having the second green source with the Triumph would be nice. So maybe we just put back the Steam Vents. Well, we can make any color with this, but we might not have it. We might kill it. And we're not going to do anything on one. Well, yeah, we have we have the shock to do that. So let's put back the Triumph. It'll be fine. Hopefully we don't get bitten by that later if we need the second green, but we'll see. All right, so let's get going. Shock. Oh, this is the blue-white one. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Okay, so we drew the next green source anyway. So we're just going to have to try to kill them as quickly as possible and hope that they can't get lifelink to get out of range. Uh, although this deck does have some pretty serious reach. Alright, so next turn we Augur. Throw down another blue and Augur. Yeah, okay. So there's the lifelink that we didn't want them to have. Now they're going to start drawing cards, but they don't have the core Spirit Dancer yet, so that's 
something at least. Although they may draw it now that they have that going. Okay, so how do we want to do this exactly? Um, blue mana? Yeah. Looking for Neoform. Come on, Neoform. Yes! Oh, we hit it. Okay, we can win next turn. No attack. End the turn. Alright, so let's hope we don't get completely blown out here. Okay, we can't block anymore, but that's not really a problem. If that's all they do, then we're good. We're going to win here. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. Okay, we're about to win. So we will shock ourselves with steam vents? Yeah, we're fine with that, because we can make any color with the goose. So, Stormcaller... To the Neoform. We'll sack our Bolas, our Augur of Bolas, because at least there's like a an extra power on the uh, on the Stormcaller. So sacking Augur is, is completely fine. It's really, it doesn't make much difference either way. All right, so now we just start grabbing all the three drops out of our deck. So let's get the dual. I usually start with the dual casters first, just get them done with. And then the next one. And now the next one. And then the next one I usually go for are the clones. So we'll grab all our mirror image first. Like that. We'll copy the dual caster. Yeah, and because this occurs um, on our turn three, uh, we don't actually have any timeouts while we're doing this, so you really have to hustle and make sure that you don't um, rope too badly. But you can usually get it done without any, without roping if you're quick. All right, now the glass pools also targeting the dual caster. It's nice that the opponent's sticking around for this. I feel like the combo is new enough that people don't actually know to scoop to it yet, so I'll get to play it out and show the viewers how it happens. All right, so then I usually grab the Combat Celebrant. I don't, I don't think the order matters here if you grab the Celebrant or the Tuk Tuk Rebel Fort first. Give everything uh, haste that way. The opponent is gonna hang up here on combat because it's a bit stunning. They, they, yeah, they've clearly not seen this before. Okay, so all attack. And then you can select the exert ability. Nine attackers. Okay, so everything's going to untap. When the opponent does eventually resolve this trigger. Oh, they're going to rope us. They are not happy. They are not happy that Splinter Twin is in Historic. Not having fun. The opponent's not having fun. I'm having some fun. And the opponent was just about to get into Diamond. They're up there in, like, Plat 4. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how this deck can get people. It can really get them to salt off. It's pretty unexpected for you to just, like, drop 24 power on the board and then attack twice with it. Alright, we do have a Seagate, but no blue mana. I don't think we can keep this, unfortunately. Uh, well, this is not great either, but I think we're going to keep it anyway. Uh, we'll put back a dual caster, because we just don't even... We don't even want that, but we do want at least the glass pools land. That's where the modal DFCs have really come in huge for this deck. Is allows us to run a pretty low land count. All right, looks like we're facing mono red here with Obosh in the in the companion area. Okay, so it's going to be a tough one. They're going to clock us pretty good, I'm guessing. We still need to draw the 
wizard. Do block here. I mean, we're not really going to need the mana from the goose. Yeah, I think we block here. It's whatever. They could probably kill it if they wanted to anyway. They've got their whole hand. Yeah, here it comes. Oh, wow. Okay, awesome. They wasted that on it, and it was definitely worth the block. Okay, not great. Uh, let's just lay this down as a land and pass and take our take our hits here. And we'll auger of Bolas next turn, I guess. That or maybe Fire Prophecy. Oh boy, that hurts. That, that hurts a lot. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna win this game now. We're definitely not gonna win it. Uh, let's play a land. This way, it doesn't really matter what we do here, but we're gonna do some stuff anyway. We'll do this, because why not? Okay, so get some non Seagate Stormcaller cards off the top of our deck, that's fine. And now we are probably just dead. Yeah, yeah, fully dead. Okay, fair enough. Alright, well, we tried. That's nice, lethal. The shock, I think, right? We always have that. Okay, so we're on, we're at one here. Technically not dead. I don't know that there's a draw that lets us live, though. Yeah, no, that certainly would not be it. Um. Yeah, I think we're just gonna maybe die. Seem, seems fine. It, like, we don't have the mana to combo. We don't have the four that we need, so. Oh, and it was right there the whole time. Mm. Well, that's too bad. Uh, yeah, that's the game. Alright, how are we looking here? Um, we have half of the combo in Neoform. And that seems like enough, honestly. I think, I think that's good enough for a keep here. I mean, the Shimmer is great. It's going to let us look for our Seagate Stormcaller. Um, so yeah, I think we'll keep it. We really, if, if we have expansion, we should, in theory, just need any two drops. So, like, drawing a, an Augur of Bolas would also let us combo off here. Uh, since we do have the expansion in hand. Although that is going to... If we're going to do it in one turn, it's going to cost us six, but we'll probably do it over two turns. Yeah, this is a full-on keep. And we'll lead on the Triome when we get our turn. Would be really sweet to draw, like, a Gilded Goose, maybe, off the top in our first draw step. Uh, so the question, do we shock for this? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we do, and we'll just delay playing the Triome. Alright, looks like we're playing blue-white control. Oh, okay. So it's Bant control then. Okay, we'll opt in response. Uh, we'll bottom and opt. Looking for a land here. Okay, so we drew the other part of our combo. That's sweet. And, oh, there's the land that we need. So what do we do here? Catch Ray Trium Pass? We don't really need to do anything, right? Uh, Well... Yeah, I think that's that's the play. We'll just get the tap land out of the way now. I mean, it's, it's not great because it's going to leave up their counter magic against us. Yeah. Okay, well, they tap out here at least, but they're not going to tap out next turn, which is the crucial turn. So let's think about what we want to do here. Um, so I think we're going to play tap land. And say go. And what we can do is maybe play the Augur or the Shimmer. Let's play the Shimmer, maybe? At least they don't see the card with the Shimmer. Okay, all lands. So we'll grab a River Glide. Alright, so they're going to start feeding their Uro with the Search, Rose Kanta. 
Yeah, they clearly do run counter magic, and they probably have some in hand if they're about if they're just gonna dump it into the yard like that. So what we'll want to do is try to leave up. We're gonna try to leave up our expansion, and maybe be able to copy their counter spell if we can get to six mana. Yeah, I think that's the plan. We're gonna try to copy their counter spell back at them. And we can auger. Doesn't really matter. We're not really doing much this turn. We gotta wait a couple. We gotta wait one more turn cycle after this. Uh, we want a backup Neoform. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Well, that might actually enable us to go for the combo next turn if we have two of them. Because they'll hold up open a counter spell for one, but they might not be able to hold open two counter spells. Depends if they have like sensor and. The neutralize. Okay, they're looking at Augur. They want to, what, bounce it? And what would they do with it? Okay, so they growth spiral. What do they add over here? Three, that'll make three. And then four with the search. If they dump it in the yard, which they probably will. Yep, they did, okay. Now they're on six mana, assuming they hit their drop, which they usually do. The Growth Spiral Uro package certainly enables you to hit land drops pretty well. Okay, so they're only gonna have one counter spell up, and we're gonna be on five mana. So what do we do? What do we do with their one counter spell up? Okay, so we try to get them to do their counter spell to the first thing that we do. And then we try to get them with the second thing that we do, right? So how does that work? Yeah, we're just one mana short here, aren't we? Just one mana short. All right, so if we go for Neoform twice, yeah, I don't, I don't know that that works at all. Let's try it. Let's see if it works. We'll just we'll experiment here. We're doing some experimentations in in ranked. They didn't have the counter spell. Oh, we should have gone for the Seagate then. Yeah. Uh, let's see if this works. I don't know if it does. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay. Well, we effed up then. Uh. Okay. So. Do this. Target. Uh, yeah, that's right. Doesn't hit planeswalkers. Yeah, that's terrible here. Next. Uh, yeah, we'll just end it, I guess. Uh, they didn't have the counter spell. We could have just gone for it. Oh well. We'll see how things go on their turn. Yeah, we should have held priority and copied it if we wanted to be able to combo. So, not great. Uh, okay, so we still have a shot at it next turn. We might be able to get around their counter spell if we use our expansion wisely. But they are going to have double counter spell up, so it's not looking great. Looking at our dual caster mage, looking at our failure. <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you at some point. Hurry. I wonder if they're gonna bring back Uro. That would be a mistake on their part. So we still have one dual caster in the deck, which is actually technically all we need. Okay, here comes Uro. They're gonna have one counter spell up. We're going to expansion their counter spell. Oh, they, they're gonna untap. That's right, I forgot they're gonna untap. Yeah, so they could theoretically have two counter spells up, and then we lose. And they have a fistful of cards, so we probably lose here. 
Yeah. It's not looking great for us. So we'll go for the Stormcaller. They'll counter it, we'll expansion their counter and we'll see what happens. So we need to play this first. They'll go for counter spell here. It looks like we got through that part of it. Now let's see if they have the counter spell for the next spell. Does it resolve? Here's the moment of truth. And we get countered. I mean, if they didn't counter expansion, yeah, okay. It goes off. The bomb goes off here. So, deck actually bails us out of playing really parably. <laughs> Somehow deck bails us out. I don't understand it. Now they don't actually have settle the, ma settle the Wreckage mana up. So we're not in danger of that here. And we're just going to attack face for the win. Alright, we'll grab our next one and copy. And grab our next one and copy and so on. You've seen this dance once before. I can't believe how good expansion has been in this game. Um, kind of acting as counter magic for us. Last pool here. Uh, grab the Celebrant. Grab the Tuk Tuk. And now we count. So 15. And then, yeah, we got them. All at the opponent. Be sure to exert your celebrant. Because it will not do that for you. And we should be able to win here, unless they have what? I don't, I don't even know what they could have. I guess they could have something. Um, trying to think. Okay, yeah, that's a blocker for sure, but it's not going to be enough. It's 15. Okay, so now they take, what, 12? And then we attack a second time, and they don't... Do they not take 12 that time? I think they take 12 that time, too. So it should be Xaxes. The opponent is counting it up like we are. So here they take 12. Or do they take 15? Oh, yeah, I miscounted. So they take 15 here, and then they take lethal? Yeah. I think that's just it. Yeah, I actually had 6 of the... Dual casters at their 3 3, uh, so that was 18. And now they're taking 15, and then they're going to take another 12, I think. So, yeah, it, it should kill them. It was just barely enough. They take 30 here, and they're at 24. So, we actually had them by 6. Boy, the opponent really does not want to let us finish this game. Because they know that we've really messed up and uh, so we still managed to beat them even though we messed up. So the deck is even better than I am bad, which is pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, so now we're attacking for another 18. And they can only block to make it a 15. So yeah, we, we ended up dealing them 30. And they were only holding up one counterspell, which 
was a pretty big deal for us. And, you know, that decision earlier that they made in the game when they flipped that neutralize into the graveyard pretty, you know, caval casually and cavalierly ended up coming back to bite them because they needed to have that second counter spell open when I was going to combo off after my terrible, terrible mistake. <laughs> They didn't even have a counter spell up when I was on when I was on five mana, whenever that was. I guess turn five for me because I don't I don't accelerate lands out. I just use the land mana creatures. So this is my turn six combo here. Okay, and that's the end of the game. Um, yeah, I think this is probably a keep, even though we do have two cards that we don't necessarily want in Tuk Tuk and Dualcaster. We at least have the Neoform, and so we'll just be looking for the C8 Stormcaller. I think any hand that has one half of the combo is pretty, pretty good to be able to keep it. And then you'll just be looking for the rest of the combo. As you proceed through the game, you should be able to draw enough cards to find it, is the, is the basic idea with all the with all the draw, uh, all the cards that replace themselves as they come in. Okay, so we're playing against Soul Sisters. Uh, we don't need a land, thank you. Okay, we'll, we'll have a land. If you, if you insist, deck, if you insist. Uh, let's play a tap land here. And we'll opt again. Do they have the Pride Mate? They always have the Pride Mate. Nope, just another healer's hawk. Sure, okay, we'll opt in response. Combat celebrant, nope. Not a Seagate Stormcaller, let's put that on the bottom. Got another land. So we go down to 17, and we draw the goose. So, question here is do we tuck tuck, or do we goose? I think we goose, because then it could be better for us later. Maybe a tap land here. Let's say go. All right, opponent missed a land drop, so that's interesting. I think we're gonna see the. Okay, can we see the pride mate now. Sure. Okay, so we're gonna block this one, and they're gonna get their four-four pride mate going. Ooh, okay. So, interesting question. What happens if we Neoform on Goose for the Stormcaller? Okay, we have to hold full control, right? No, no, it won't work. No, I don't think it'll work. Yeah, no, because it's going to only be able to get two drops, and all the copies will only get two drops. Ugh, that's annoying. That's annoying. Yeah. I think we wait. I think we wait. We just play the Tuck Tuck and wait. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we really need a two drop here, I think. No attacks. Like either the Augur or the Seagate, I think, is, an, is a fine draw because it'll allow us to go grab all the three drops that we want. We're gonna resolve that. We're gonna block the Pride Mate with the, the Rubble Fort. So as not to take quite that much damage. And they'll get in for one, and we'll go to 15. So it should buy us a little bit of time if we block with the Rubble Fort. What are they going to conclave? Are they going to do the goose? Oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, they're doing the rubble for it. Okay, fine. Well, then we'll just chump the pride mate with the goose. It was weird that they did the rubble for it. I don't know. It was just a weird, weird play overall. Yeah, we do. We definitely block. Okay, so I think we're pretty dead here. I 
Yeah. Alright, well, jump blocker. Keeps us alive for a turn. But we're, we're pretty, pretty much dead. Yeah, so the problem with trying to neoform the goose here is that we're not going to be casting it when we copy it with expansion. I think, right? Is that wrong? Maybe that's wrong. I don't know. Maybe I could have done it. This is the problem with not really having played this deck very much this week. I just... I'm not very familiar with how it works, so... It's a problem. Yeah, I think maybe we could have won and we just didn't know how to do it. Eh, did we stay alive for a turn? I guess we might as well. We'll stay alive for a turn. Block here. And see what's on top of our deck. But in all likelihood we lose. Yeah, okay, we lose. Alright, we've got half of the combo in Seagate and the ability to look for the other half with Bolas's Augur here. We don't have any green mana, which is problematic. We need to be able to cast the Neo form. I think we're just going to keep it and see where it goes. Okay, not the best of draws. Uh, we might end up casting the Valakut's Awakening here to try to get rid of some of these clones that we have a couple of here in the Tuk Tuk we could also be pretty happy getting rid of. Oh boy. Oh boy, okay. Right, we've got our work cut out for us here. Okay, green source is not bad. I think we need a blocker though, so let's shock for the bull losses auger here. It's going to be way too slow. I think we're going to be dead by the time we get to the point where we can combo off. Yeah, didn't hit it. Yeah. Would have been nice to even just hit like a fire prophecy there. Could really use that. But. We used to run Pillar of Flame in the deck, which would be good in this matchup, but I don't know that Pillar of Flame is good in enough matchups. Oh gosh, the Derma Alchemist is the real killer. Okay, drew the Neoform, but might be a bit late. I don't think we're going to be alive at that point. Be able to cast it in two turns. Uh, okay. It depends on how much burn they have in hand, really. So three cards in hand for the opponent. One of them was a lamp. One of them is a spell. Oh, nice. Okay, that, that we like. We like to see that. That's what we like to see. Now they're going to attack us for five. Or do they have another spell? Just another thermal alchemist? Okay, so attack for five. I don't have to do it later, I guess. And they're going to look to kill us next turn, but oh, we can combo off right now. Yeah, that was exactly the land that we needed. And we have plenty of power and toughness in our deck to be able to win the game right now. Alright, so we're about to outrace Mono Red, which is pretty nuts. So let's do this. Let's combo off. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, wow, the um, the shock land really is exactly what what we needed. I mean, we would have been fine with a pathway land either there. All right, here we go. We still have one Tuk Tuk Rubble Fort left in the deck. That's why we run two of them. We really need that here to be able to give everything haste and win this turn. That's so crucial. Yeah, we're going to put like 18 power in, more than that into play. I'm not even counting the combat celebrant. Once again, the opponent perhaps unaware of what we're about to do. 
and that would be the reason they're hanging around. Or maybe they just want to get a glimpse of the new Splinter Twin on the block. Yeah, so not even doing things in my customary order here, just whatever. Grab a dual caster, grab a clone. Grab a clone. All right, so that brings the total to what? Three times five, so 15. Here's 18. And then I'm not counting combat celebrant, which will be five. So that's 23. Yeah, they'll be dead on the first, uh, first swing here. All right, roping. Combat. Put that on the field. And then the last one grabs Tuck Tuck to give everything haste. Creatures I control have haste. And let's attack with all of them. And let's exert just to be certain. Okay, and that's game. So that was Neoform combo, nicknamed Neostorm. It's a pretty explosive deck and pretty surprisingly resilient. I think uh, the addition of Expansion Explosion, I have it here as a two of. I think you could very easily justify it as a four of. Uh, was a fun addition to the deck and let us fight against the control players a little bit more, uh, the ones who are running counter magic. Um, now, I think it's especially good against the Bant deck, but since the four color Omneth deck seem to be running a main deck Ether Gust, it's a little bit less effective against Ether Gust. Um, basically, it has no effect uh, really against Gust. Um, so that's something to think about with expansion: is that if you're trying to use it both as the ability of copying Neoform and also the ability of trying to use it as a pseudo counter spell, it can be very ineffective in certain circumstances. Like, it's fine if the opponent's trying to counter with Negate but it's not going to work against cards like Aether Gust or Dovin's Veto. Um, certainly not. So keep in mind that it's limited in its power to copy things. Um, I clearly did not have very much experience piloting the deck. I was learning kind of on the fly uh, in this episode. But uh, nonetheless, uh, the deck was more than powerful enough to bail me out, and um, I had a great time playing it. As far as changes that I would make going forward, um, I don't really know what I would say other than you could probably go up on Valakut Awakening. Um, sometimes it's a bit awkward to cast at three mana, but it does allow you to cycle through a lot of cards, which you need to do to find both pieces of your combo. I think another card that which could easily go by the wayside would be God Eternal Kefnet. If you wanted to make more room in the deck, you could probably cut that. Um, it was something that Yeoman Five put in the deck as a way to maybe uh, get an extra copy of Neoform or an extra copy of one of the draw spells. Like, uh, well, in his version, he was running some, a whole bunch of different draw spells, but like Opt, for example. Um, you could copy that to try to look more for your combo, but um, I think overall it wasn't a card that came up in the video today, and uh, it wasn't necessarily a card that impressed me outside of the one match that it did win for me by copying Neoform. Um, so that is Neostorm, uh, the new combo player in the historic meta, uh, focused around the cards Seagate Stormcaller copying Neoform and just basically putting your whole squad into play. Uh, with a plus one plus one counter on each of your dual caster mage or clone of dual caster mages, and then giving everything haste with rubble fort attacking twice with combat celebrant. This seems fine. This all seems fine. Um, you know, with everybody preoccupied with the standard banning that might take place on Monday, um, this deck has somewhat flown under the radar. Um, I'm not sure that it's the most healthy thing to be in the format, but. Um, it certainly is a lot of fun when you're playing it, and knowing exactly when to go for your combo or try to hold back and, and maybe hold up counter magic uh, or, or watch for a counter magic that the opponent is holding up. That's another thing you could think about doing in this deck, maybe running like a, a couple of uh, Mystical Dispute or r running some kind of counter magic of your own. But um, overall, just a, a fun deck and a really fun time to pilot. Uh, you should. Take a look at it closely if you are interested in combo decks in Historic. Uh, this is the newest one, and it certainly has been fun. So, have a great rest of your day. Uh, this is Evil Empire, signing off. Until next week.